Maybe because I was born on the Mediterranean, I feel so connected to this sea, to this land, to this light. Because the Costa Blanca is my passion, it's my life, it's who I am. It defines me as a person and sets me apart from the rest. Yes, it's important not to forget who we are and where we come from. That helps us understand the meaning of our lives. By this sea I was born and grew up, laughed and cried too, the emotions of life. Our land is health and well-being, the joy of living, in our own way, in our own style, authentic. That's why so many artists come to the Costa Blanca looking for inspiration, to capture the essence, that light that defines our character, and not just artists. So many people come here and stay. The sky, the landscape, the rosy sunsets, the warm sand under your feet, the sea breeze on your skin, the mountains and seeing the sea from the heights. I love to close my eyes, take a deep breath and feel the sun on my eyelids. As if the light was inside me, I can't explain it. As my grandmother used to say, life is full of inexplicable things. You have to live them, feel them. I had to live in other parts of the world to really value what we have here. I have everything I need. My future is here. I've learned to enjoy the little things, the little pleasures in life. And we know a lot about those. There's nothing more authentic than feeling happy in the place where you were born. And however hard I try, I can't explain it in words. Costa Blanca, authentically ours. Buying a property in Spain. There are many reasons to purchase a property in Spain. The climate, the food, the culture, or simply to enjoy life. If you already see yourself buying the house of your dreams in the Mediterranean, it is important to be cautious and follow the series of steps. First, prepare a budget and take into account all the possible expenses. Remember to add transfer tax or VAT to the sale price, as well as legal fees, notary fees, and land registry fees. And even if it was love at first sight, do not rush or sign anything. The most important thing, especially if you're not yet a Spanish resident, is to hire an independent lawyer, a specialist who speaks your language and solely defends your interests. Together, you can review the characteristics of the house, should it have pending charges, negotiate a mortgage with the banks, and you will always be up to date throughout the whole process. But most importantly, fall in love with your property and do things by the book. Your new life starts there. Payetheir and Aretia, international lawyers. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us today in the uh, latest webinar we're going to do before the summer and going on holidays, which we are all uh, willing to go. I'm going to introduce you today um, on the panel, the different speakers. Um, we've got the pleasure to have here uh, Stephen Bromley from um, Hondam Villas. Hello, uh, Stephen. Hondam Valley Homes. Hello. Uh, Hello, hello, Stephen. How are you keeping? Well, yeah, very well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you, Stephen, for joining us and, and sharing a, a lot of information. We've got in Alicante as lawyers, uh, Pedro Deria. Hello, Pedro. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good afternoon, Ignacio. How are you doing? Very well, thanks, Pedro. Um, we have on the other side of Spain, in Andalucía, we've got Michael Davis uh, in Almeria. Hello, Michael. Hello, Ignacio. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all. Um, we are delighted to have Stephen um, to, to give us a little bit of uh, information about his expertise and living in the inland area, etc., etc. But now, uh, what we're going to talk first is uh, buying a property in Spain in a safe way, 
especially inland. We haven't done these webinars about the inlands and all the things we need to bear in mind. And um, today we're going to talk a little bit about things you need to bear in mind. Okay, um, what we're going to talk first is about the due diligence. My recommendation here to do is uh, buying a property in Spain is safe. Uh, you just need to be careful to appoint uh, the, the independent lawyer for you to start the process and just buy the house that you really want to live in. I'm sure Stephen will tell us later on a little bit uh, about all the ins and outs on the characters and he will share different types of property. And, and Michael will, will tell us as well in down south in Alta Maria all these in and out things uh, about the inland area. Uh, now, buying a property in Spain is safe. The only thing you need to do is do things by the book. Uh, as I said, the due diligence I will recommend you to do is obviously to find the, 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 the right person to represent you. Um, then you will apply for the NI number. Or nowadays, some of you might be interested to apply for residency permit, which is uh, residencia. Okay. Um, now, uh, having the NI number and the residency permit is not a problem. Uh, doing the tax planning is not a problem, but buying the property in Spain, probably you will come over to Spain, put some money down, do a reservation contract, probably a small uh, amount of money until uh, you put it off the market. Then your lawyer will start doing all the research, all the investigation to give you a report saying, what are the conditions that you, your property, the property that you're willing to buy uh, is uh, meeting, okay? Then uh, after all the due diligence in an inland property, you will find properties that still need to be declared. Um, there is probably a piece of land, you, the house hasn't been declared properly, then you could identify that. You could identify whether there is an infraction, no infraction, whether it's affected by some roads or not, right away uh, and different bits and pieces. Well, this is important to identify and to identify any potential problem. Um, after that, your normal practice will pay a deposit. Uh, probably the reservation contract might go into 3000 euros to put it off the market. Then you do all the due diligence and you start uh, doing the contract, the purchase contract. Sometimes with a second hand is 10% and then you go on completion uh, and sign it at the notary. It is likely for you to uh, grant power of attorney to the lawyer and the lawyer will take care of everything and do things by the book, okay? Pay the transfer tax, which will be different in Spain than in Andalusia, in, in, in Costa Blanca rather than Andalusia is different at the moment. Uh, and probably Michael will tell us uh, all these differences here as well and uh, register the property. Once the property is registered, the lawyer will change the direct debit, and uh, then you could probably relax and start a new living. I'm gonna pass over to, to Pedro first to tell us a little bit about what legal tips and recommendations he will advise um, buying in an inland property, and then and Michael will give us uh, some thoughts about that. Then Stephen, um, will share with us uh, a video, the type of properties, and his advice. So I will pass it over to Pedro, and um, and then we move on. Over to you, Pedro. Okay, Ignacio, thank you very much. Um, I fully agree with what you've said, and well, hi, everyone. And obviously, I'm going to give some tips uh, regarding buying a property in Spain. I have just um, inserted a link where there's a we have some guides. So one of them is buying a property in Spain in order to guide everyone what the steps should be done before buying a property in Spain. <clears throat> there are some peculiarities, I would say, when you buy a property inland, eh, the, rather than if you buy a property which is pr probably been ma mainly in the coast. As in inland, there are some peculiarities um, that must be um, checked. Uh, I would say a little bit more with more intensity. intensity eh? And uh, well, first of all, buying a property in Spain, there are like, I would say like two or three kind of steps to, 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 from the beginning to start when this reservation contract, when someone um, well, uh, fall in love with the property 
Uh, and then once you, I mean, to make a reservation and make a, a fee, a payment, in order to pull the property out of the market. Uh, normally this is done with a state agent, uh, which is fantastic, it's good. It's not, I, I always say that it's not really needed to, to find a lawyer before, but obviously I like to recommend before you make any payment, just uh, tell us to, to check the property uh, before. Sometimes this is not easy because sometimes it's slow. Sometimes you have to decide rapidly. So I recommend to make a reservation as quickly as possible as, as once you have decided to buy the property, the why is the property that it fits to your requirements, but pay a small, a small fee. Mm. So this is reservation contract. And from the reservation contract to the private purchase contract, which is a contract between buyer and seller, where all the conditions, where all the conditions are included and, and uh, a higher amount is paid, let's say 10%, sometimes more, mm, then th through that time it needs to be checked and make a due diligence in three different, I would say mainly in three different um, um, uh, situations. First of all, is the land registry. Land registry, what it appears, who is the seller, identification of the seller. Then we can check if there are charges in, duly or officially inscribed, who is the seller, which is the situation of the seller, which is the description of the property. And um, that is extremely important as it gives us uh, a background of the description of the edification of the house. If there is a, as Ignacio said, it's a swimming pool, it's not inscribed or a barbecue or anything, any construction that you have seen in the, in the reality when it was shown to you, but it's not in the land registry. Or, or just to describe, just to check what is the description on the land registry and the land and the, uh, where the land is in that municipality. So first of all, is the land registry is extremely important. Another official uh, registry, I would say, and, and I would say many people say, well, this is not extremely important, but I say, I think it's extremely important is Catastro. Mm -hmm. Catastro is, a, is, I would say it's a, it's a like, a, it's a official, obviously official uh, administration. And all the city, all the council tax in Spain, it appears like a referencia catastral, which, which is a reference, Catastro, um, Catastro reference, which is like alphanumerical number where duly identifies the property. I'm not sure if I, I'm gonna be able to show, let me, if I can do that, Ignacio, just to show um, how this is done. Mm -hmm. I will just, I will try to put a link here. Let's see, let's see if we can do it as this. Um, can you see my, the, the computer right now? Yes. Ignacio? Okay, let me see if I can see, take, for example, this property. So, for example, in this, this property is a catastro, where appears this is a property. This is a public office, so uh, you can access to that with the reference to catastro. We cannot see who is the owner of this property, for example, but this is public information. This is not a protected information. So we can, we can check, for example, in this property, perfectly. I mean, which is the construction, we can see the land, and uh, and well, we can see which is the what is outside this land. We can see the swimming pool, which is can see that some work, work on construction done outside. Well, we have made plenty of information of this property, for example, right now, according to the description and according to the description in the land registry, as I said, and according to the description when someone has seen the property and it has taken the property accordingly. So, land registry catastro. And the reality needs to be everything updated. Mm? Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just stop this. Um, okay. And that's like, extremely important. And catastro and land registry, and then the planning situation about the property. Mm? Uh, one of the due diligence that we made always is uh, to apply for uh, reports. One of them to say if there is no any file against this, the property. And the other one is to check which is the conditions and rules, um, terms of that specific area on the municipality. If the land uh, should be minimum, for example, 1,000 square meters or 2,000 square meters or 5,000 square meters, which is a percentage to occupation of the property on that land specifically, to check if that property is or, is, or isn't uh, out of, as we said, fuera de ordenación, which is like when a construction is not according to the planning law, which is a situation where it's describes a different situation about the use of a property. So these three things, these three steps are 
made between the reservation contract and the private purchase contract. So before signing the private purchase contract, this needs to be duly checked. Mm -hmm. And uh, once it's checked and now everything is well, perfectly and secured and well, it's, it's a code just to pay uh, the, recipe, um, the ARRAS, which is the deposit, the 10% deposit or the rest of the money. And then just planning a code to in order to go to completion, which is a, a notary deed, which obviously this is like a, a code to the, to the steps in Spain is the, the time when you become an owner. But the beginning of the of a, of a file, beginning of a, of a agreement is extremely important to check those things that I've said. And obviously I will be able to, to discuss and, and be a little bit more um, accurate with any, any question that may, may arise, Ignacio. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, very good. I'm sure we can share later on. There's gonna be a lot of questions uh, uh, and, and answers. Uh, and I'm sure uh, we could open um, the, the, the meeting in a few moments. I'm going to pass over to Michael. Michael is an expert lawyer in Andalusia. He's been practicing law for many, many years, I believe uh, 25 years, ex-honorary counsel. And I'm sure Michael will give us a little bit of bullet points. Uh, uh, he dealt with a lot of conveyancing uh, now and in the past and uh, a lot of inland property as well. I know in that area is a different situation as well but at the bottom of it is is England. Over to you Michael. Thank you, thank you Ignacio and thank you for inviting me to these great webinars that you're doing that are very 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 useful for people. Okay, um, yes I'm in Andalusia and obviously I know that both you and uh, Pedro are in different areas but both in the Valencia region. This is very important because the inland, the purchase of inland, uh, inland property uh, can, uh, the, the, diff the, 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 the legislation varies from one region to another. So what would be correct up in Valencia would not be correct in Andalusia. Uh, like with uh, urban properties, the, sy the system is almost exactly the same, even the same, even though our transfer tax is different. But with the inland properties, there are certain uh, uh, differences. So the first thing I'd like to say is that anyone that buys a property that's inland, I think they should realize two things. One is that buying an inland property from a conveyancing point of view is actually more complex than uh, buying a property, uh, an urban property. Uh, very attractive, there are beautiful properties inland, you get, let's say, better value for money, uh, but it is a, slight, a bit more complex. So whatever you do, don't, sometimes when people are buying an inland property, and, and the value isn't very high. We see there's a temptation to use a, a cheap lawyer or someone that does something sort of, you know, not even a solicitor. And that is not the right thing to do because uh, nothing needs a good lawyer more than an inland, uh, an inland property purchase. Um, in answer to what we have special with the inland uh, properties versus what you have in Valencia is that we have a thing called an AFO. So apart from the, north, the things that uh, Pedro has mentioned, down here, if we come across, when we do those searches, exactly the way that Pedro has explained it wonderfully with a catastro and the title deed, if we detect that there's been an extension on the property and that what we find in the property register is not what appears in the, in the title deed, sorry, it's not what, it, what is there physically because there's, there's a larger piece of property than what appears in the title deed, we have to legalize. It has to be legalized by the seller. And this in Andalusia, uh, you can only do, if it was built without a license, you can only do it by a thing called an AFO. There's lots about it, if you read about it online, there's lots of it. And basically it's a procedure that you can only do on, on, on extensions that have been built for over four years and they aren't in built in natural parts, et cetera, et cetera. They're quite expensive to, to organize and therefore uh, uh, sometimes the seller will refuse to do it but then you simply can't purchase the the, the property. That's our main difference, the AFO in, uh, in Andalusia. Um, apart from that, in Andalusia, uh, we've got the advantage at the moment that uh, transfer tax has been reduced until the end of the year to 7%, which is great. It's also valid for inland uh, With inland properties, I'd also like to say that apart from the, the lawyer, that's very important, we normally recommend that you have a survey done as well on the property because it will help the lawyer detect where there are any extensions etc that are not declared on the title deed and it will also help with the measurements of the 
of the plot uh, because there are sometimes uh, uh, problems with these with with the boundaries and things like that on on um, on rustic properties. Enough here. There's not much more for me to say because Pedro has explained it wonderfully. We use the same tools, the cataster office, the property register, uh, just that little extra precaution that we think needs to be, uh, 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 one needs to take when you're buying uh, in land. The people that are buying very expensive properties in land, like, you know, in the sort of big fincas in Seville, there's no problem with because they know, you know, surveyor, to pay 500 euro for surveyor is no big deal if you're buying a very large property. But you do need one as well, even if you're buying a small property down inland in Almeria, for example, or something like that. Okay, well, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, uh, it's good value to have you all here. I did um, take the opportunity to share with the audience here your email, just in case people have a specific questions to you. Um, Stephen, I did exactly the same with you on your website, uh, huntonvalleyhomes.com, and Michael Davis from Davis Solicitors, uh, Avogados, davidsolicitors.com, and, and Pedro. So feel free, if we don't have the time today in this hour of webinar, to send them direct to the expert your questions or um, anything you might need. Now, uh, I'm going to share with you, uh, Stephen um, did provide us a video about living in Hondon, Hondon Valley. And, um, and uh, I would like to, one friend to share it with the audience now to get the atmosphere. What is an inland um, situation of property? What can we expect? And then Stephen will give us his know-how, what we should do um, if we decide to move in this area. So I'm gonna pass it over to Juan Fran, um, and then, We'll get back to Stephen. Thank you very much, Juan Fran. I'm going to pass over to Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing uh, this nice video in London. And uh, I understand um, that uh, you've got a lot to say now, London Valley Homes. Over to you. Thank you, Ignacio. Right. Uh, firstly, I need to thank both of you for uh, inviting me on. It's uh, an interesting way to spend the, uh, the, the, the tail end of the day today. So thank you. Uh, 
I've learned a bit from uh, certainly from Michael. Uh, I've never heard of an AFO before, so I now know what the uh, what the AFO is. Uh, we don't have it here, but if ever I venture into that neck of the woods, uh, I know what uh, what I'll be uh, dealing with. Uh, so some really great uh, information. I'm going to add my sort of perspective now on on the things that you've uh, that you've mentioned, and also sort of explain to people some of the nuances or the differences between what they might expect if they were looking at buying something on the coast or venturing inland. And by inland, as far as we're all speaking, we're not talking driving inland two hours, we're talking sort of 30 minutes in, the, in from the coast, from the airport at Alicante. So uh, basically I have a, an estate agent in the area called Pondon Valley Homes. I've been selling here since 2006. Um, the Hondon Valley, as I just mentioned, is about 30 minutes inland. Um, and it's it's probably the first chance you get to escape from the coastal Spain and maybe the, the hustle and bustle and get to a slightly more relaxed way of living. So rather than, than you know, busy roads and lots of, of restaurants and bars and the, the, the holiday Spain that people are used to, this is maybe somewhere that if people are looking to retire or have or maybe even nowadays work from home it's an area that they may find is better for quality of life so we find that there are a lot of people that when they originally buy in spain um, they buy the spanish dream that they've had from their holidays and so they will go to the area that they know well but we all know that your holiday life and the reality of living in spain are two very different things we don't eat out every night of the uh, of the day we're not out in bars and restaurants and pubs and clubs, life still continues when you live here in Spain. So you want somewhere nice and relaxed, beautiful scenery, beautiful restaurants and bars, but somewhere where you've got a bit more space, a private pool, a bit of land, rather than maybe a balcony that you will have on the, uh, on the, on the coast. Um, as an inland agent, our job is basically, we are paid by the vendor. So we're not paid by the, the purchaser. We are an employee of the the vendor and consequently we're not 100% independent. However, when we are dealing with clients, you'll find that we probably spend 75% of our time, of our time dealing with the, with the potential buyer because the vendors lived in Spain for 15 or 20 years. They know how the, the situation is, they know the rules and bits and bobs associated with it. Whereas somebody who is buying doesn't know anything. And if somebody says to them, an AFO, they don't know what an AFO is. If somebody says a, a certificate of non-infraction, they probably don't know what an infraction is, or a certificate of antiquity or a habitation certificate. These are all crucially important things. And so part of the job of the, the agent before the client looks at the property or even uh, meets a lawyer is to probably explain a lot of these things to uh, the client. So, when it comes to the vendor, we will explain to them what they need to do in order to get their property in the correct condition so that it can be sold without issue. And the client may have lived in the property for 15 or 20 years. And in that period of time, the Spanish paperwork has changed, the requirements are different. So we have the habitation certificate, the energy certificate that have all come in recent years that probably weren't in effect when they bought the property. So we need to explain this to clients and, and explain the costs and what's required and how they go about doing those sort of things. For the buyer, it's a bit more complex because they often know nothing. They have a dream of coming to Spain and they've done a little bit of research on the internet. But as we also know on the internet, not everything that's written is 100% accurate. You don't know who wrote it. You don't know when it was written um, and you don't know whether it was accurate in the first place. So you need to speak to professional people and some of those are agents, but obviously your lawyer is also incredibly important when it comes to that, to, to fact check the lawyer, uh, sorry, to fact check the, uh, the agent. Um, so my job initially is to check all the paperwork of the property, check the escritura, which is the deeds, check the cadastral, uh, which, uh, which Pedro uh, ran through, make sure that everything is basically correct. However, if we find that there is a, an, an issue of some sort, it's not our job to sort it. It's the job of the, the vendor's solicitor in order to sort that. So we can give advice to the, to the client, but then we will point them in the direction of their lawyer, or if they no longer have a lawyer, point them in the direction of a, a lawyer that can then assist them in getting the paperwork correct. The last thing I want to do as an agent is basically have a property on my books, go to the trouble and the expense of finding a buyer, 
only for their lawyer to turn around to them and say, there's a problem that's insurmountable and I don't advise you to buy this property. I've wasted the vendor's time. I've wasted all the lawyer's time. The, the, the client who's looking at buying the house obviously is going to have no faith in us as an agent. And of course, I've wasted my own time as well. So it's, it's in the agent's interest to ensure that the property is as correct as possible before they even put it on their website. So any property that's on our website, we will have done our due diligence as an agent in order to get the property as correct as possible and then pointed the clients in the right direction uh, in order to get them to, to have their property updated as and when. Um, and then if we can demonstrate to a buyer's lawyer that the work is in progress or it's been undertaken, then the, the, the buyer's lawyer should be happy. And they, in conversation with the two lawyers, will then see that the, the property is moving in the right direction if that's needed. It's, it's important pointing out as well that, that not all inland properties are rustic. So the, the, the two major classifications of land, and correct me if I, if I make a mistake here, please, but we have rustic land and we have urban land. And urban land, everybody thinks, is the coastal and the cities, but obviously it's the villages as well here. So if you buy a property in the village, it will be classed as urban land and be treated in exactly the same way as it would be if you were buying an apartment in the middle of Madrid or Granada or any city in, uh, in Spain. And also, for example, here in the Hondon Valley, we have an urbanization, which is uh, an a, a area of land of about 400 properties in the middle of the countryside in the Campo. Um, but that is also treated, the land there is also treated as being urban land. So we don't have the com complexities of rustic land um, that uh, you would in, in other areas. So you do have an option of buying urban properties as well, even though you're in the countryside. So that it's a, a quite an important classification for people who, are, who want the security of urban land, but maybe want to have beautiful views of mountains and forests and, and things like that. Um, so we, we help the vendor by checking all the paperwork. One of the things that we do is we have to hold the hand of the potential buyer because they are full of dreams and, and don't have much information on the technicalities of buying. So we have to give them the A to Z of how to do this. And one of the ways we do this is we redesigned our website about three years ago because we realized all agents' websites were basically the same. It was just lots of properties and prices and descriptions, and that was it. And we thought we need to offer something a little bit different to the clients to give them the information that they need in order to make the correct decisions. And so we did uh, free to download eBooks and uh, questions and answers section. But we also did something called Two Minute Tuesday, which is, a, um, I think we've recorded about 108 videos so far. Um, and they range from everything, for buyers and sellers alike, about the taxes involved in buying, because believe it or not, some clients don't realize that there are extra taxes on, on top of the purchase price of the property. And again, they, they vary from Andalusia, where Michael said it's 8%, and Murcia, where it's similar, 10% in Valencia. And, and to give, give the clients the information that they need so that they can purchase with all the facts. And, and so we have these videos on the website that cover certificates and fraction, the certificate of habitation, things that we will talk about casually with the clients. And yet in, we realize that they don't know what that means. So as an agent, we can be as guilty as the lawyers of, of firing away at a million miles an hour with some phrases. And we don't sometimes appreciate that sometimes the client doesn't know what an infraction is um, and what, what the lawyer actually does. So we give advice on how to choose an agent, how to choose a lawyer, how to choose the area, the questions to ask when you're on viewings, the silly things like the etiquette of viewings and what to do on a second viewing as opposed to, as opposed to a, uh, a first viewing. And then, of course, the offer process, how you go about making an offer and um, you know, it's it's never really done in front of the homeowner. It's normally done with us when we when we are away from the property and we have a chat with the clients in a in a cafe. Uh, but how to qualify your offer? You know, so whether you're a cash buyer, whether you need a mortgage, if you have a property to sell. One of the problems I, I hate to mention the Brexit word. I'll be the first person today to mention it, but uh, I will be. Since Brexit, obviously, British clients nowadays need visas if they're going to come and live here permanently. Um, if it's a holiday home, it's less of a problem, but it also brings on the question of at what point do you make an offer? 
do you do you start the process of getting your visa before you come to Spain? Do you do it whilst you're here? You have a 90 day allowance to come. You know, there are lots of different aspects that, that we need to inform the clients on so that when they come here, they are they have the knowledge that they didn't have when they first started this buying journey. Uh, so we do that with our with our, our website. Um, we've got a, a nice little chat box on the uh, website as well, so that when clients are uh, looking on the on the computer and they're looking at a particular property, they can type a message to us on the screen and ask us specific questions about that property without maybe picking up the phone or sending an email. So they can do a live chat, which I think you have on your website, uh, and and it just gives you the opportunity to talk to somebody. Um, and ask a specific question about that property whilst you're uh, you're looking at it. Um, as I said, we've got the ebooks, the downloadable articles. Uh, they cover all the major topics, and we have many, many more in the pipeline to uh, to, to sort of go to in the future. Um, Stephen, sorry to interrupt. Uh, are you able to share um, on screen um, your your website while yeah. you're talking? Let yeah. Me, yeah. Let me bring it up for you. Yeah. Right, so you should be able to hopefully see uh, the website now. So if I click on the home page, so this is our, our website. Me without a beard, mm -hmm. so clean shaven version of uh, of myself. Um, obviously, we have the, the 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 standard, you know, the the properties, the featured properties, and most recently added uh, added properties here. Uh, it gives you an idea as well of sort of some of the prices, 184, 160, 110,000 euros. Uh, we have the advice, which are the videos for clients who want to buy or they want to sell, which I'll cover in a second. And then we also have some videos on here um, sort of explaining that these are videos that we shot of the, uh, of the area. Uh, La Montañosa is the urban area that we have where the, the properties are in the, uh, in the middle of the valley uh, for clients who, uh, who want that. Um, and really, we've, we've split the, the website in half, that we have the buyer section that you can see up here, which has the villas, the, the new builds and off plan, which are uh, an incredibly popular way of people buying at the moment. Uh, we have downloadable ebooks that uh, the clients can, uh, they can uh, see the, the ebooks, which are post-Brexit buying uh, requirements. So it covers all of the information uh, uh, since, uh, since Brexit. Uh, we've given uh, uh, an ebook here on the 10 steps to buying. And these are the, the, the steps that we think are the most apt ones for people when they're looking at buying. And then, of course, very importantly, we, are the costs of buying the, uh, the property in Spain. So over and above the agreed sale price of the property, it's what you should expect to pay whilst uh, when you're buying a property here. Uh, the seller's section is, is exactly the same. We have the um, uh, if they were evaluation and, and frequently asked questions. Uh, but if we go back to the, the buyers uh, uh, section again, where we have the expert advice for buyers, if we click on that, this is the, the videos that we, we produce for clients. Now, as you see, the, the one that we uploaded on Tuesday, yesterday, let's talk about Sangria. So less interesting whether when it comes to taxes and the cost of buying, but we like to pop in a few videos that aren't necessarily about tax and things like this. So uh, especially with it being as warm as it is, so a glass of sangria uh, would be uh, nice. Again, the, the next one is, is for people, you know, both people that live here and people that are thinking of uh, moving here. Ideas for days out. So as, as we're probably all aware, there is a beautiful spa uh, town called Archena in Murcia and with beautiful four or five star hotels and you can go there very inexpensively for the weekend. A couple here that where we, we sat with the, with the local vet from the, uh, from the uh, village. And one of the things people often don't realize is that when you are here, you're, you're gonna you're be bringing your pets. Well. So, uh, you know, we have, um, we have uh, uh, a couple of videos here where we sit with Rachel, uh, who's the local vet and she talks about all of the uh, the things that you need to do before you bring your uh, pets to Spain and then when they are here in Spain. So, you know, we forget about little things like that, but, you know, the pets are a, a very valuable side of the, uh, the family. And I'm, and I'm sure if we, uh, if we scroll down, we'll get back onto uh, the, the taxes. And here we go, Spanish ITV, which is the MOT, reunification visa, golden visa, uh, bank repossessions, are they a good idea or not? And, you know, as you can see, we have... 
many, many videos, we've got 13 pages of them just for, uh, just for buyers themselves. Um, and then we've got things like videos. Um, so we have um, the video that we've just seen that I recorded one Saturday, no intention of recording the video. It was just a beautiful sunny day. We were going to buy our vegetables as we normally do uh, in the village and picked the phone up, took a video and it's had thousands and thousands of views now on, uh, on uh, online. So, so the, the, the website is there and I think more agents now are, are sort of realizing it's, it's less maybe yeah. about, about yeah. properties themselves and more possibly about giving people the information and making the, the websites a bit of a portal. Um, and and you, you also, you, you gain the trust of the client by giving them as much information as, as you do uh, when they're there. And of course, you know, pictures of the area, the blossom that we have in the spring, the, the, the villages, the poppy fields, um, and then the video that we just watched uh, uh, before I, uh, I came in. We have a, another useful uh, section on the website as well, which is we're often asked by clients to um, put them on a mailing list. And what we had at one point was a mailing list with about a thousand people on it. So on a weekly basis, you'd have a hundred people saying we want to come off because we found properties and a hundred people saying they want to come on. And these are the particular properties they were looking for. So what we have now is a, it became a full-time job managing it. So we now have a, um, an opt-in, opt-out um, section on the website where they can, they can log in on the uh, website. Hopefully this works because I've not practiced on here. And you can set up a property alert. So you can add your favorite properties. So when you see a property that you like, you can click on it and it will go into the favorites. But you can then say, okay, I want a property on, uh, in Hondon de las Nieves. I want uh, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. And you can search. You can give it a name for the, the Hondon search. If you're looking in a town called Aspe, you can call it the Aspe search. And it will then do a search for you of all the, all the properties. Um, and it will alert you when we add a new property to the website. Um, and if there is a price change on a property, it will, then, um, uh, it will then alert you as well. And basically you can opt in and opt out of the website as, as and when you feel that you want to, without having to email us and say, can you take my name off the mailing list? Can you add my name on the mailing list? So again, this is something that agents are sort of trying to uh, get on. Uh, remote viewings. Are also very important. So, with regard to remote viewings, uh, we most agents now can do these with Zoom um, and things like this. And I think all the lawyers will have a meeting with clients that aren't available to meet them. You can meet them uh, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. Um, Stephen, sorry to interrupt. Is it possible yeah. to play uh, a tour if you are living abroad at the moment and I want to watch uh, and see how the property is? Is it possible to, to just press the button and watch it, uh, or you don't have it that um, way? Okay, so I'll show you a video of, um, okay, let's just click on one of the latest videos. And what I'll do is I'll play you a video. Let's have a look just at, uh, okay, we just sold that one, so I'll do this one. So this is a house in uh, near Abania in Murcia. So we, there's about 40 or 50 photographs of the property itself on there. But when you scroll down, we have the video. Let me make this a little bit larger. And so we have a video uh, that allows people to, to have a look around the, uh, the property. Um, and it gives you more of a flow for the video, whereas a, you know, a photograph will give you a good idea. Whereas this this allows you to see 360 degrees around the uh, around the property, um, figs on the fig tree, the lemons on the gin and tonic tree, as we like to call them, uh, the views at the bottom of the garden. Um, we then walk around the property and and show it exactly as it is. You know, with a photograph, maybe you can hide something. With a video, you can see everything. So it gives the client the opportunity when they're not able to come uh, to as good walk around it. We do also, then we'll take the camera with us and do a live video with the clients at the property. Um, and we've sold properties, we sold plenty of properties to clients who have never set foot in, in the Hondon Valley. They've seen the property. Um, and from a combination of the photos, the video that we take, and then the, 
uh, the, the WhatsApp viewing or the Zoom viewing or FaceTime, whatever it is. It gives people a really good idea. Um, I know uh, Steven Spielberg when it comes to using the camera, but at least it gives people an idea of what they can expect when they go to see the property. And I'm constantly amazed that when people come and do the viewing, they know more about the property than I do because they've, so they've watched the video so many times. So, uh, you know, the, the husband will say to me, how many square metres is the property? <laughs> I'll fumble for my figures and the wife will say, it's 154 or 166 because she knows the exact size, uh, you know, when she's, uh, when she's looking at it. Uh, we do this for, for new build properties because that's the new trend at the moment in land is resale is still king. However, there are more and more new build properties being built. Um, so that seems to be one of the trends as we're, uh, we're going. Um, but it's the same with, with new builds and resales. The sort of the, the top tips are you've got to have a good lawyer. You know, the, the, the agent will show you the properties and they will, they will show you the properties that you want to see, but your lawyer is truly independent. So make sure you have a good lawyer that speaks your language. Um, they work for you. As Michael said, the rules are slightly different in Andalusia as they are in Valencia and Murcia. So they are, are similar, but with slight different tweaks. So it's obviously important to make sure that uh, you're up to date with everything and your lawyer will give you the information that you have on that. Do your homework before you come to Spain. You know, it's no point going and looking at 30 or 40 properties because you won't remember the good ones and the bad ones. Narrow down the search before you get here. It's 30 something degrees outside today. Trust me, when you're getting in and out of cars, looking at properties, it's, 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 it's a long, hot day doing it. Um, so don't try and look at 10 properties in a day. Look at three in the morning, three in the afternoon. Uh, go sit by the pool, have a nice meal at, at lunchtime. Um, find the area that you want. Uh, the area is, is, is the most important thing. The TV show is called Location, Location, Location. Um, the, once you've found the area, you will find the property that you want within that, uh, within that area. Um, and you know, you'll, you'll do that. Um, and finally, again, something that was, uh, that was mentioned before, as an agent, we always want, when clients do buy a property and they find it, don't pay the agent, don't pay the vendor, make sure the money gets paid through your lawyer if at all possible, because your lawyer is truly independent, they work for you. Um, and you know, if you give the money to the vendor and then your lawyer says there's a problem with the property, you've got to try and get the money back from, uh, from the vendor. Um, whereas if the money's been paid to your lawyer, then obviously it's uh, it's a lot easier to get back because your lawyer won't have paid it to the vendor if there's any issue with the property. So I hope that that gives you as much information. Thank you very much, Stephen. A very very good explanation and and good knowledge as well. Um, I don't know if Pedro Michael wants to comment anything here. Hmm. Um, well, I have to say that Stephen, I'm very I like really the, the informative the information that you have in the website, the description, the videos, the photo. I'm absolutely um, amazed about what I've seen. So uh, congratulations! You have a fantastic website with the description, and I understand. And uh, at the end, the people has to be duly informed about anything that they are looking for in this case properties. And I can see that you are doing a fantastic uh, work. Uh, on the on the villas that, that you're selling so congratulations for that thank you okay uh, michael would you like to comment anything in the inland area as well where, where you are i know you've been phrasing a lot of things would you like to comment anything extra before we even go uh, uh, on the questions yes uh, well uh, i agree what steven says we sometimes overlook that there are indeed uh, just because a property is inland doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be rustic i mean i myself i tend to associate the two things but it doesn't have to be because they're obviously uh, you know houses in the center of villages inland are just as urban as a, a flat in the, in the center of a golf course there's no there's no there's no doubt that is uh, that is true also the inland property i mean we we love inland properties and there's just such a big variety. I mean, uh, you've got, you've got, if you want a villa in land, you can buy a beautiful villa for 180,000 euro instead of 400,000 near the beach. And you are, you are, it's not what people think, you know, an hour and a half away. No, no, it's like Stephen says, we're 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away, and you get basically double for the same amount of money. But also in land, there are other things. I mean, you've got big, what is in Spain we call fincas. I mean, there are fantastic, million euro and two million euro inland properties near Seville, which is the area that I know. We've had some clients from London that have bought one recently, fantastic with, you know, horses and, and all these sort of things. 
that's in, inland as well. So for the same price, they'd buy a medium-sized villa on a golf course in Marbella. They bought this incredible property, 800 square meters of build, five hectares of land, a couple of horses there, you know, and you're only actually half an hour away from the center of, uh, of Seville. So inland is a place to explore both for people on a budget of say 200, 150, but also on people that are on a higher budget because they may have been thinking about the, the small villa in Marbella, but there may be things that are of more interest to them inland. It's a question of uh, seeing what's right for them. Well, thank you, Michael. Yeah, good comments. Uh, um, now we're going to just jump into questions and answer. I don't know if, uh, if we'll be able to answer to all of them. Uh, there is one uh, here. I think Carmen is, is saying that she's buying a property, off-plan properties. Um, I don't know if, if, if Michael, Pedro, will you recommend anything? Obviously, I know you will talk about bank guarantees, Michael. But uh, will you? Uh, she's buying a property in Madrid, Obra Nueva, right? Uh, and what will you say after so much uh, where, years of where? experience? Where is she buying in Nathio? Where She's buying in Madrid. She's buying in Madrid. I don't know whether inland or not, but uh, okay. in Madrid. If, if, if it's in Madrid and it's from one of the major uh, builders, because there's a lot of uh, major builders, you know, big stock market builders that are building there at the moment, as long as she gets her bank guarantees on her stage payments, uh, it's perfectly safe. Uh, the bank guarantees, as, as you know, I'm obsessed with Ignacio. Uh, the bank guarantees are the key. So you need, she needs to get a solicitor, make sure she gets bank guarantees on, on all the stage payments, and she'll be fine. Okay, good. Uh, Pedro, would you like to comment anything on the questions we have here on the panel? Or, uh... Okay, I think I've, I've, um, I'm, I'm watching right now one of the questions regarding, uh, probably uh, Michael is, is more aware about this kind of house, it's a cave house. And uh, but what I'm as I'm really need and Michael, I'm, I assume you let's read it out. But oh, I would wait, say, I, yeah, yeah, I don't I, know the area, it. Pedro. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it I, says the I, area. I don't, I haven't read it. Uh, probably, uh, I may, maybe it should be in the area of Granada or maybe Almeria. Or, I, I'm not sure, but it doesn't say is there. Or but or Abanilla. But let me let me say again. I mean, what it says is. Um, I've made this. The, the lawyer says that important thing is the land registry and the land registry you described. But the catastrophe looks like it's not this, this, that property. This is why I said at the beginning, catastrophe is a very, very important office. I mean, if, if the question says, oh, my lawyer has said that the property is duly inscribed, but it's duly inscribed in the name of a vendor. The vendor has sold the property to you. But is that property the one who has given you the keys, the one who is really the property that is described in the land registry? Uh, this is why it appears the catastrophe and the duly and officially and obligatory Sorry, say I would say identification of a real estate under the catastrophe or catastal reference. Catastal reference, as I mentioned before, give us the identification of a property properly. So it means that in the land registry should appear that reference and catastro where it where says that property which is being sold to you is the same what it says in the land registry. It's very complex to, to, to explain this, but what is saying that person is that is, uh, or the lawyer is saying to, to to, to that person, which I, I reject that uh, argument, uh, not totally, but partially. Say, well, the property is duly inscribed. Yes, most of the property, I would say 95% of the properties in Spain are duly inscribed in the land registry, even though it's not an obligation. But that property is the same what that is described in the land registry, the same one who has, has the possession of the vendor and has given you the keys because uh, maybe that description of that registry uh, looks like it's that property, but maybe it's the other, is the, the one which is just next to that one. And the catastrophe reference is the one, uh, is the identification of the property which give us a solution in order to see this property, what says in that land, land registry, is the same one which is in the catastrophe office and is the one who is being sold to you. So it's extremely important to duly identify perfectly the property and not just say, well, it's a land registry number, it's a vendor, it's a description on a cave. Because sometimes land registry, the description is not enough on the location on the land. Because there's a boundary in the north, in the south, and west, it's not enough to duly identify that that property or that land is the one you're buying. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Uh, I just we didn't mention as well the importance before we go about having proper surveyor reports. Uh, obviously, Stephen did go through 
he does his due diligence and obviously is his interest um, to have everything uh, pretty much tied up. Uh, as as a lawyers, we really insist uh, having severe reports, especially because when you buy property, uh, as as Pedro and Michael said here, um, everything needs to click. So the land registry meetings of the house and the land needs to click with reality. So there is three three things we need to make make sure: catastro needs to click with reality, the land registry meeting needs to click with reality. And, and, and the reality needs to be shown and uh, register according to what it is. So that three identifications are important. How do we know that? Because sometimes clients come over here, we really don't know because we didn't visit the property. The best way we always do recommend is if they find something we describe, we say what it is, if, them, if there is anything missing, let's say for example, meters, you buy an uh, 10,000 square meters, but on the land, you've got only 8,000 euros. So that's what is excess of the cabida. And that needs to be mentioned and, and, and a solution needs to be brought up, okay? As a vendor, I always recommend them to do their homework if by any reason they bought uh, not finalized. So, because whenever you want to sell, you want a straightforward conveyancing and straightforward um, situation. So. Uh, we identify problems with the with the land. Sometimes there is less meters, probably uh, less meters in the house as well, pool, uh, garage, etc. Um, and then the catastro, so, as Pedro said, is not showing the reality. Uh, everything starts there with a the proper survey report, measuring the land, measuring the house, and then legalizing. If you are a vendor, I always recommend do it sooner than later if you're planning to sell. If not, somebody will have to deal with it, even through an inheritance, children or whatever, because if any time that's going to be sold, that needs to be updated. And as a buyer, this is important to know what you are um, facing, because later on, you'll have to deal with it as an owner of a property. I don't know if I'm missing anything else, Michael, uh, Pedro? Yeah, well, I, I'd like to say is one thing, and that is that with rustic properties, because unlike with urban properties, you know, there is a... Uh, there's a higher percentage of them that have not got the paperwork absolutely perfect. Okay, there's a higher, there is a higher percentage. What I always recommend, if you look at, if you don't really know the area, don't know whatever, if you're looking for a rustic property, definitely find find an estate agent. Go through an estate agent because at least then there's a minimum filter there that you know they'll filter out the ones that are more that most obviously sort of got the wrong paperwork. So you won't waste time and you won't waste. Uh, uh, solicitors' fees in looking into it because we sometimes have people that they look on the web, they come over, and you know they go for one property and it's a no-no because they call the number. It belonged to an old Spanish lady who inherited. The paperwork's not in order. Then they do it again. And by then they've spent two thousand euros on paying us to look into the paperwork of two properties. We we say it's better if you're doing a rustic property, go through the agents because basically in that case there's a very small percentage of possibilities that we'll have to turn down the purchase later on. So it's much more, it's, 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 it's more cost effective. Okay, thank you, Michael. Okay, well, I'm gonna thank Stephen for his great presentation and uh, explanation to all, okay. to everybody here. Uh, I think it, it's been a pleasure sharing with you this, this seminar, the webinar. I'm gonna thank Pedro. Well, before I go, uh, Stephen, I did mention here your website detail just in case they want to contact you direct Stephen from hondonvalleyhomes.com uh, we've got here Pedro as well thank you Pedro for for your advice as well oh, thank you uh, Pedro from uh, dot es, alicantalawyers.es and thank you obviously Michael uh, for your advice Michael Davis from Davis Solicitors I just mentioned here your email as well Michael um, Michael Davis at davissolicitors.com. Uh, I thank you for your time today. I hope you learn a lot or a little bit more than yesterday. Uh, we are ready to go on holiday very soon. I'm not sure if Stephen is having a break, but we are. Uh, Michael, uh, we are going very soon on holidays. We'll see you in September. Um, Absolutely. All right. Um, I wish you all a great summer. Juan friend is going to just share it. A video with you and then we'll see you all in september okay yeah. so thank you for Enjoy. your time
Adios. Enjoy your holidays. You work very hard. Very good. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy, Enjoy everyone. Right. Thank you very much, Michael. I'm going to pass The world away. turns, and with each turn, a change. And each change makes it more complex, unpredictable, enigmatic. The world keeps turning. And from the Pellicer and Heredia practice, we anticipate everything that is going to happen. Brexit, artificial intelligence, new commercial borders, legal tech. The world keeps turning. And it commands the reliance on international lawyers who are capable of interpreting this new reality with integrity, honesty and transparency. Offering answers to so many new questions. Whatever it is, ask us. At Begitera and Heredia, we know how.